when we're thinking about what molecules might be doing, how they might be interacting, we were thinking in terms of like the number of copies of those molecules. But these molecules are really, really, really tiny, and so we can't weigh out individual molecules if we want to test them in the lab. Instead, we have to weigh out large, large, large quantities of them, and then convert between that large quantity and the number of copies. The way that we can do this is by using the molecular weight. So you can find this molecular weight on the bottles of these various solids that you're working with, or, well, Google. Um, a technical note, molecular weight sometimes called the molar mass or the molecular mass. The term is also sometimes interchangeably used interchangeably with formula weight, though technically it should only be used for molecules, so covalently bond things and not things like complexes um, and salts and that sort of thing, but you'll often see them used interchangeably. Also used interchangeably are weight and mass, although technically weight takes into account gravity, whereas mass doesn't. And so I kind of just am gonna go between them and hopefully you don't mind. So the molecular weight, we typically, you see it written as MW. Um, and it's going to tell you how much one mole of a molecule weighs. So a mole is Avogadro's number, and it just means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I like to think of it kind of like the biochemist dozen. Um, except it's a lot, 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 lot bigger than a dozen. Um, but it allows us to deal with these really, really big numbers um, without having to use really, 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 really big numbers. And we also, sometimes that's too big, and then we have to use prefixes to make them smaller. Um, and so more on that in other posts. And you can easily convert between um, different prefixes. So what can you do with this molecular weight? Well, you can do a lot of things depending on what you want to know and what information you have. So if, for example, you want to have the mass of the compound, so you weigh out some solid on your scale, and you want to say, okay, how many moles are in there? What you can do is you can divide that mass by the molecular weight. You see the grams are going to cancel out, and you're left with the number of moles. If you go the, want to go the other way, say you know the number of moles, and you have the molecular weight, well, now you can calculate the mass. We're often using molecular weights when we're trying to make solutions. So if we want to make a solution of a given volume and a given concentration, where that concentration is in terms of molarity, um, where molarity is moles per liter, what we can do to figure out the mass that we need to weigh out, we can multiply that molarity, um, the desired molarity, by the molecular weight, by the volume. And you can see that the, your units are going to cancel out, leaving you just with your mass in grams. So your mass is going to be in grams because the molecular weight is going to be in grams per mole. Um, and the molarity and the, the volume, these need to be in liters. So because molarity has liters, your volume should be in liters as well to cancel out. You can also say you want to calculate the molarity of a solution, given that you know how much you put in, so how much of the mass there was, as well as the, the volume that there is. To do this, you take that mass divided by the volume and divide that by the molecular weight. You note that I just did the like shorthand where you flip over the, to multiply by the inverse um, to divide. So I hope that doesn't like trip anyone up when it looks different. Um, but you can see that you have your units cancel out and you're left with moles per liter, which we said was the molarity. Okay, and now finally for those fun facts, the quick estimates that you can do for biological molecules. So the average amino acid, so a protein letter, is about 0.1 kilodaltons. So this means that a thousand or, or a hundred daltons, if you want to think about it that way. Um, but when we're dealing with proteins, they often have hundreds of these. So it, we often talk in terms of kilodaltons. So a, one protein letter would be about 0.1 kilodaltons. So if you have like a thousand amino acid long um, protein, that would have a molecular weight of about 100 kilodaltons. Um, if you had a protein that had like 600, you had that had was like 60 kDa was the molecular weight. Well, then you could think, okay, that protein is about 600 amino acids. It's not exact, and it's going to depend on the amino acid sequence because different amino acids have slightly different weights. Some have drastically different weights, um, but in terms of an average look back of the short, shorthand, back of the envelope estimate, that'll work out. Another one if, is that the average DNA nucleotide is about um, 300 Daltons. So if you have double-stranded DNA, um, you're going to have 
and we often give the length in terms of base pairs because you have like double stranded. And so each position will be like one on each strand. So we need to multiply that 300 by two, so 600. So a base pair is about 600 Daltons. So if you know the length of, in terms of base pairs, you can multiply that by 600 to get a rough idea of the molecular weight in terms of Daltons. So you probably then would want to convert it to kilo Daltons, which you could easily do by just dividing by a thousand. So hope that helps you deal with molecular weights and I will post a link to this cheat sheet so you have it for reference.